Thank you, Justin. I think you will continue with your interview uh, with uh, Dr. Poi, right? After reading Maybe. out such a long list of the <laughs> events, so I hope every one of us will be taking part in all these well-arranged events. Great. Thank you very much, Stephen. So, as Stephen said, um, you know, I think this would be, uh, you know, on the 20th anniversary, it'd be a great opportunity to get some insight uh, from my mother, uh, Dr. Vivian Poi. She uh, was uh, one of the um, uh, signatories, the founding signatories for Asian Heritage Month. Um, Mom, hi. Um, so I guess I want to start with, uh, you know, for everybody to know, what was your original vision for Asian Heritage Month? And now that it's been 20 years later, how has it turned out compared to what you originally had envisioned? 20 years ago, when I got to the Senate, I realized that Asian Canadians were invisible. We were not even part of Canadian heritage. Somehow we were not, we, we were the ones, Asians are always known for working hard. We keep quiet, we keep our heads down and we just move on with our lives. Well, I realized that that wasn't good enough. We needed to be noticed, we needed to be appreciated and we needed to speak up. So therefore, um, I tabled the motion to have May as Asian Heritage Month uh, so that we are recognized by the federal government. Mm -hmm. Because and at that time, there was only, um, you know, uh, other, other groups were celebrated like Black History Month, but Asians were never mentioned. Now, 20 years later, the, um, the celebrations and festivals have grown a lot larger than I could ever, ever expect because it went right across the country from BC to PEI. Huge festivals, month-long celebrations, uh, acknowledgements, uh, remembrances. It, it's absolutely wonderful. However, in the last couple of years, because of the Asian hate, because of the pandemic, I just feel things have moved back. Um, really, I had hoped that, and, and I still want that in the future, that um, racism is just not acceptable in a country like ours. And I like to see that eliminated in whatever way that is possible. So, um, well, let's let's continue on that topic because yeah. I mean, uh, Asian racism has has always been around. It yeah. just seems that, that COVID nineteen has been a catalyst to it, it brought it back, you know, to a heightened period. Um, how do you feel that things are are now? I mean, you know, two years after the beginning of the pandemic. Well, I I think we have a lot of work to do. First of all, the, uh, uh, I, I believe the government has a huge role. As Mayor Tory was mentioning, he, uh, he is doing a lot for Toronto, but as a province and as a country, the, uh, the government has its role in, um, in eliminating or helping to eliminate racism. Uh, as it was mentioned in a symposium at your university just a few days ago, uh, it is time to set up a, a racism commission instead of just human rights commission. And I really agree on that. That is the government's part. The government, uh, certainly um, uh, uh, politicians can speak up for minorities in this country. And I'm not just talking about Asians. I talk, I'm talking about all visible minorities. In fact, as a big group, soon will be the majority in this country as an entire group. But I think it's very, very important for this country, because it is a diverse country, it needs to be an inclusive country. So, you know, Asian Heritage Month, obviously many uh, Asians participate. They also want to learn about other Asian cultures. But how do we get um, more people to participate? Because I, I, I get asked all the time, like, how, how do I participate in Asian Heritage Month? What can Canadians do to participate during this month? 
you know what? Anybody can celebrate. Um, uh, companies celebrate. Um, uh, just as an example, I, uh, um, it was celebrated. I took part in a celebration for Starbucks across Canada last year. And um, so that's a business. Um, recently, I spoke to the, um, to the Ontario Association of Social Workers. Uh, there are many groups out there that do celebrate uh, because they, uh, aside from the fact that they have a lot of Asians in their, in their organizations, they also want to learn about Asians in our midst in this, in this country. And I also recently spoke to a seniors home, which is a non-Asian seniors home because the seniors are interested in Asian and Asian heritage. So anybody can, can celebrate. And of course, um, if one wants to log on, you know, one can um, log on to programs like ours or go to Canadian Heritage website. And I want to mention 20 years ago, we were not on that website. Mm. It was a real struggle for my office to get that on. And we became part of Canadian Heritage. So what are, what are some of the things, I guess, you know, I mean, there's obviously a huge long list, but what are some of the things that you would want Canadians to know about the contribution of Asians in this country? I think the important thing is um, not just about Asians who have contributed in this country, all other groups like First Nations, um, uh, the, the Blacks, the uh, uh, people from South America, any, anywhere. We need to have proper um, education for our youth. Uh, um, when, when children learn about Canadian history, they need to learn the real history, not the whitewash history by the, um, uh, um, by the um, you know, since the, by the imperialists about colonization. It, it, they really, I think children need to learn everything, the truth about this country. Until you need to know the truth, you can't move on. You have to accept what happened before, good or bad. Accept it and correct it and move on. And I think that's extremely important. And, um, and, and just recently, I was in, at ROM uh, seeing the new gallery of um, uh, the origin of the world. And if children, if all children learn about how we all started from, from the ocean, started from nothing, from one cell, we will all find out how unimportant we all are. Therefore, we don't have a right to, to, um, uh, to hate another person or to feel superior to another person because we are all a microscopic uh, spot in this world. So we are all nothing or we are all important. So I think that's extremely, extremely uh, uh, important is the it's education. It's all about education. And talking about education, I believe that uh, in the school, children should learn about all the great civilizations in the world not just the last few hundred years, but the great civilizations that existed in Africa way before Europe. Thank you, Mayor Tory. Way before, because it, the, way before Egypt, it was in the Sudan, the great civilizations and the great civilizations in the Middle East and in Asia before European imperialism started taking over. If we have everything in the right context, if children understand that, there will not be any racism because it, racism no longer makes any sense. No, it's true. It's true. So I guess, uh, you know, to, to cap this off, what, is, what, what do you love most personally about Asian Heritage Month and when you celebrate? Because I know I, you do a lot of speaking and you, you meet a lot of people I just want to know what, from your own experience, what do you love most about it? I love most in making friends. I have made so many friends across Canada, 
friends from different different backgrounds, different groups, and it has just been absolutely wonderful. And many of us still keep we keep up, uh, even though you know none of us is really that active anymore. Even though I like to think I'm not that active, I still am. Uh, officially, I'm not. I'm retired, but um, uh, it's the friendship. And when you make friends with people from other backgrounds, from other countries, and you share food and you invite to each other's home, you you can't even think about discriminating against each other, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, great. Well, thank you very much for this message and. Um, uh, it's, it's amazing that we're celebrating 20 years. It just seemed like not that long ago that we were in Ottawa, you know, celebrating the, the first year. And, uh, so thank you, you very were much. There. For, uh, you were there, for, Justin. Yeah. yeah, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank okay. you. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, to, uh, Dr. Poi, and thank you, Justin. Uh, Dr. Poi, thank you so much for uh, telling us your foresight and, uh, the way to go. I think that's, that's very important. Yeah, so that we can emphasize more on education for our, you know, younger generation.